As you already know, I'm supposedly the green guy. What makes me green? I think one of the outstanding features on the outside is obviously the green colors, but I think my botak, bald, is very, very good for the environment because I didn't need any shampoo this morning. And if it would be in a cold country like Europe, the hair dryer might consume a lot of electricity as well. That will actually be my main theme today. I want to share with you my thoughts on how and why we are wasting electricity. We are living 7 billion people on this planet Earth. And especially in the last 200 years of our human history, we've been trying to get our hands on the oil, the gas, the coal, and everything we can find to fuel our modern concept of life and industrial development. 200 years ago, there was no light bulb. Just imagine how our event would be today if we wouldn't have any electricity. We wouldn't be able to hold it in a completely enclosed room where we don't have any natural daylight coming in at all. We have loads of lights running here. We wouldn't have a microphone. One reason why nowadays I often don't use PowerPoints, because I can save electricity. And I can avoid some things, technical hiccups. So, just imagine 200 years ago, we might be somewhere on the outside, shaded with some trees in an area where we have such good acoustics that all of you could understand me talking in the absence of electricity, loudspeakers and artificial lights. We take electricity for granted. It's been in our lives since we were young. Unless you grew up in a place like where I went last year, in October, Barrio in Sarawak. It's a mountain region. There, the electricity only kicked in at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. But only when it had, it had been raining a lot the day before. Because the only electricity they get in that part of Barrio is from a small hydro dam. So it relies on water building up. If no rain, no electricity. Unless you've got your own diesel gensets, where you then produce the electricity with diesel. Or you have solar as well. This is another option. But nearly all the families up there are relying on the hydro dam electricity. And there is not enough for all day. So it only comes in at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Those are the moments where you realize, hey, maybe there used to be a life without electricity a long, long time ago. That is one of the problems. We take it for granted. Number two, one of the main challenges when it comes to electricity, we don't see. We don't touch, or we better don't touch, because if we touch, we could be in, in trouble. And we don't see the associated environmental impact, right? We only see if we have consumed too much electricity after the deal is done in our next electricity bill. If we eat food, we can see how much we eat. We drink water, we can see the amount of water we are consuming. But with electricity, it's invisible. Unless you do something that we did last year as part of a concept of the Internet of Things, we installed in my friend's home a real-time meter. I have the data on my handphone. I can see when he and his wife take a shower in the morning because there is a peak of electricity consumption. Most of you might not know, but the instant water heater in people's home has a consumption of 3,500 watt. So you can see a peak in the real-time energy consumption when people take a shower that have such a real-time meter installed. Then I can see when they are back at home cooking something at lunchtime. And I can see when the wife comes home, because the wife always switches on the aircon. 
actually, the interesting thing that happens was my friend kind of knew a little bit most of the energy consumption was due to the behavior of his wife. But he didn't want to say, honey, you know, please change your behavior. You know, let us reduce our electricity consumption. He didn't need to do that because once they had the real-time monitoring installed, the wife realized herself. Every time she came home, boom, the electricity consumption graph went significantly up. Why? Because she always switched on the aircon when she comes home, which is one of the main contributors to our electricity consumption at home. I was speaking with an expat two weeks ago at lunchtime. And he said, you know, I don't care about my electricity bill because I don't pay. Yeah. Then I did a little trick. I tried to make it meaningful to him. He didn't care about the bill because he wasn't paying it. So what I did is I calculated his carbon footprint. The total environmental impact in carbon dioxide equivalent based on his electricity bill. So how much is your electricity bill, I asked him. Oh, 1,500 ringgit a month. Wow, that's a lot for one guy living in a condo. That's gigantic. Yeah, I don't bother switching off the aircon because I don't have to pay for the bill. Then I told him, okay, 1,500 in Malaysia, one kilowatt hour is about 30 cents. Let's multiply it with three. Then we have approximately your total kilowatt hours. It's 4,500. Then in Malaysia, we have a figure given by the government to produce one kilowatt hour of electricity roughly triggers off 0.75 kilogram of carbon dioxide. So for every kilowatt hour you consume at home at the power plants, Actually, I gave a talk for some children the other day. And I asked the children, where does the power come from? Oh, from the plug in the wall. No problem. Plug in the wall. Yeah, great. Where does the plug in the wall get it from? And the kids were thinking, thinking, thinking. And then one small guy raised his hand. And I loved his answer. He said, it comes from the electricity manufacturing plant. Yeah, that's what we are doing. We are manufacturing electricity with coal with gas, sometimes with diesel, sometimes with renewable energy, which has a much lower carbon footprint. But because most of the power plants in Malaysia are coal and gas, the average for Peninsula Malaysia is about 0 0.5, three quarters of a kilogram per kilowatt hour. So I did the calculation. Okay, per month, you are responsible for about 3,375 kilogram of carbon dioxide pollution, global warming pollution, going up into the atmosphere. Really? So much? Yeah, that's about 37 times me, the green man, in weight. Oops, I revealed my weight. But I haven't revealed my age. But this was something that suddenly was meaningful for him. He was actually shocked how much he contributed pollution with regards to climate change. One of the big, maybe the biggest challenge of our modern civilization. Within a natural fluctuating temperature that we have always seen on the planet, now due to human activities, we have really poured so much carbon dioxide and other pollutants into the atmosphere that we can see a visible change in temperature, a rising change in temperature due to human activity, 7 billion humans. We can't see it, we can't touch it, but the more we make it visual and meaningful, the more powerful it is. Our education, that's point number three. Do kids learn in school how they can save electricity? Not really. I don't think that's part of the curriculum. Do we get that as an education in our homes? Maybe sometimes if our parents are conscious, conscious about it. But what I've seen a lot in Kuala Lumpur is, you know, my friend's house, the kids go to bed at night, they wear thick blankets, and the aircon is uh, um, programmed at 20 Celsius. You come into their room, it's like a fridge. Kids grow up getting used to air-conditioned sleeping. Kids grow up 
getting used to spend the weekend in the air-conditioned shopping mall. Outside it's so hot, so humid. Why go to the forest? There are leeches there. We are disconnecting more and more from the natural environment. Think back how it was when you were young. Did you play with electronic gadgets? Not that many. We used to play with things that did not consume any electricity. We played with nature. We played games with one another. We played football. That was what we were doing. So the education system and the lifestyle that we have today moves us away from reducing our electricity consumption. Then one point that maybe some of you will not like, but I personally think electricity is still too cheap. If something is cheap, we waste it. Apparently, Malaysians consume 40% more electricity than the ASEAN average because the electricity is still heavily subsidized. If you look at it from an investment perspective, Malaysian and businesses will be reluctant to invest in energy efficient equipment because their return on investment is much longer than in other countries because the cost of electricity is low. And we have not priced in the fact that we are polluting the planet, that we are causing health impacts deriving from the pollution. When I was a youngster, I was involved in campaigns against acid rain in Germany. Our forests were dying because of acid rain coming from coal-fired power plants and chemical industry. The government introduced legislation. The legislation brought the pollution down and we were able to actually have the trees grow again without the problem of the acid rain. So these are some of the things that we need to look at. We don't want the electricity to become too expensive, but rather than subsidizing electricity, we should subsidize uh, education. We should subsidize jobs to get more people into employment and make resource consumption a little bit more expensive because then we will save more. One thing that has happened in our society is as well, we have actually built homes that are not in line with the local climate. Maybe it came in the days when the British came to Malaysia and suddenly built European houses. But the Malaysians were so smart. They built the kampung house. Did you need aircon in the kampung house? No. When you came home, it was so cool, maybe you needed a blanket. We have actually made some major strategic mistakes in how we built homes and offices. I wrote a book, my one number tip in this book on green living with regards to home is before you buy or rent a home, go there at 8 o'clock in the evening, all aircon switched off. If it's too hot and too humid, don't buy, don't rent. If we the consumers start demanding cool homes, then developers will deliver them. At the moment, nobody does it. It doesn't need to cost anything extra. The way how you design it, the positioning of the building, the building materials you use, if you have an envelope that is insulated, at no extra cost, you have a cool home. I plan to build a 20 square meter uh, micro home where no aircon will be required because I will make sure the insulation is there. I want that home to be as well off the grid, no electricity, no water. Rainwater harvesting, small solar, I think we can do it, no problem. But at the moment, the mass housing, the commercial offices that we have, all require a lot of aircon. Because they have been designed, unfortunately, not with the local climate in mind. One other problem we have on a macro level is, people focus on megawatt and gigawatt instead of megawatt. Have you ever heard that idea of megawatt? Negawatt was defined by Amory Lovins, the head of the Rocky Mountains Institute. Negawatt is the electricity you do not use, either through behavioral change or through change of to more energy efficient equipment or appliances. The negawatt, the electricity you do not use. The most environmentally friendly and the most financially friendly form of energy. But 
What we see happening is banks like to fund big power plants that produce megawatts and gigawatts. Whereas funding energy efficiency, behavioral change is not really happening so much out there in the marketplace. But megawatt is the very powerful concept. So finally, I think our behavior is key to making the change. What about your behavior? This point became very clear to me some years ago when I moved into a condo in Mount Kiara. Nice place, very quiet, owned by my friend, my landlady Rowena. Four months after I moved into the condo, I get a call. Hey, Matthias, Rowena here. What's wrong with you? Wrong with me? What should be wrong? Are you never at home? Are you manipulating the TNB meter? Huh, what's wrong? Your electricity bill. The Matsala guy from the UK who used to live there before, his bill. Every month I get 450 to 550 ringgit. Your bill, 28, 32, 31. What's wrong with you? I said, okay, let's meet up for a coffee and discuss. What was the main difference that resulted in 90% lower electricity consumption? Behavior. A totally different behavior. I had not spent any money to invest in technology. I had not installed solar. I had not changed the light bulbs. But I had a different behavior than that guy who used to live there before me. Number one, one of my principles is sleep without aircon. I use the aircon for a little while to cool down the room and then the fan. But before I move into a new place, I check out. Is it very hot and humid? Then I don't take. Number two, try and create some open air circulation. But you can only do that in quiet places. You know, if you're in a very noisy neighborhood, that's why I always make sure I don't move into a noisy neighborhood. One of the main reasons why I moved out of Mount Chiara, it's getting too noisy. But if you have some nice air circulation, natural wind, I don't take shower with hot water. Even if you would have that monitoring system installed in my place, you could not see when I take a shower because I never switch the hot water heater on. But, you know, I'm not saying everybody needs to do the same like me. Start where you can. If you're used to using the aircon at night, maybe reduce your thick blanket. Maybe program your aircon system so it runs for an hour or fix the temperature at 24 or 25. Then you have a much lower electricity consumption than 22. Or get an inverter aircon. That one, normal aircon is about 750 watt to 1000 watt for one horsepower. Inverter aircon is about 400 watt. You save a lot of electricity. But when you buy a new home, developers will not give you an inverter aircon because it costs a little bit more. So green technology, energy efficient technology, needs us, the consumer, to go for it. In the principle of sick it, sick it, lama lama, jadi bukit, every little thing counts. For those of you that don't speak Bahasa Malayu, little by little, more and more, we grow a mountain. So my hope is that today all of you will go back and look at where can you find the negawatt. Where can you start healing the planet by reducing your electricity consumption and reducing your kilowatt hour? And by that, you will reduce the total CO2 emissions that are required for power generation. Seek it, seek it. Lama, lama, jadi bukit. Megawatt is better than megawatt. You are the change. Thank you.